get rolling. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jeffrey Moss from Parker Dewey. Really excited uh, to have you all join us on strategies to improve campus recruiting, and in particular, the usage of micro internships to do so. Today's webinar is focused primarily on helping employers think through how to more effectively engage, assess, and ultimately recruit college students and recent graduates for summer internships and full-time roles. Uh, we obviously welcome our university, college, and other post-secondary partners uh, who have joined us for this session today. I presume there's a ton of great takeaways you can share with your employer partners. In addition, we'll be hosting a session later this week specifically for colleges and universities and other post-secondary partners that we invite you to as well, I'm sure. One of my colleagues will share information about that session in the chat. Um, with that, let's kick it off. Real quickly, what is Parker Dewey? Again, most of you probably know who we are. This is not meant to be an advertisement about us, but just to give a quick overview, uh, Parker Dewey pioneered the concept of micro internships back in 2015. Uh, micro internships, and we'll go through what they are, but they're used by companies, nonprofits, small businesses, large corporations, and everything in between as a way to more effectively identify, engage, assess, build relationships with individuals who could be candidates for summer internships and full-time roles. It doesn't replace existing campus recruiting programs, doesn't replace the great relationships you're building with colleges and universities and with students, but rather complements all of that. And this is something we've seen be highly, highly successful over the past eight years with a range of organizations, some of which are well known to everyone on the call, like Microsoft. Others are large companies that might not be as well known, like Fleet Corps or Smith Nephew or small businesses or nonprofits. That's one of the things we're most proud of is how these micro internships support the needs of employers across every industry, size, department, et cetera. So what are the challenges organizations are facing in campus recruiting today? So we actually just returned from NACE last week uh, where a number of colleagues and me and I spent time with employers and, and colleges alike. And we continue to hear the same challenges. How do we access diverse candidates? Looking beyond the traditional feeder schools or just the 3.9 finance majors coming from certain programs. Another thing that was top of mind is how do we engage students early? Most campus recruiting efforts are focused on the juniors and seniors. Well, in reality, as we'll talk about as we go through this, most students have already made up their mind at that point. They've already decided what company, industry type of role they want but they're interested in learning early. How do we evaluate skills? We've all hired people to have amazing resumes and interview really well, only to find out maybe they're not the right fit for the organization. Or in contrast, finding students who have those skills, especially core skills like communication, problem solving, and adaptability, but where it might not be captured on the resume or in a GPA or in an interview effectively enough. We're hearing a ton of challenges around geographic needs that we're an organization based in a certain location and we're not really able to recruit from schools outside of that geography. But meanwhile, there's a whole bunch of students who want to return who attend university elsewhere. How do we help them know the great opportunities that exist in technology in Kansas or the opportunities for students who want to do innovative marketing in Akron, Ohio, or the student who's from Florida but goes to school in Texas or California and wants to return home? And then finally, how do we communicate the employer brand? And that's been super interesting to me, whether it's a company with a less well-known brand, again, especially a smaller business or a B2B, but even for those organizations that have well-known brands, students might not be thinking about them. I wanna do technology work, but I wasn't thinking about Nike. I wear their sneakers, I love them, but I wasn't really considering them for technology roles. Or I wanna do finance, but I think it's only with the investment banks. How do I look at the CPG companies that may have great finance roles? And a lot of these challenges exist because they're not really solving what the students actually want. So we actually just wrapped up our annual student sentiment survey where we've asked thousands of college students and recent grads how they actually wanna be recruited, what they're actually looking for. And what jumped out at me is 95% of the students that said that real paid work experience with an organization is the most, uh, the most valuable way to engage them, 95%. It's not the career fair, it's not the info sessions, 
what they're actually saying is they're only engaging in those efforts with companies they're already planning to apply to or aren't seeing value in those efforts. They're not learning anything beyond what they could find from Google. What they really want are these real experiences. It's actually the number one reason students participate in campus recruiting events. The other thing that jumped out at me was that the number one need right now of college students is more experience. They see job postings and they feel like they're getting filtered out because they don't have the right prior work experiences. They don't have the right opportunities to demonstrate their skills. They're also feeling like they don't have the professional networks, especially students from populations underrepresented in the workforce. The other thing that jumped out was when they're looking. And to my earlier point, most campus recruiting efforts are focused on juniors and seniors. Now there's some specialized programs that are driving early access for freshmen or sophomores, but the vast majority of the efforts are the career fairs and info sessions targeting juniors and seniors. When the majority of students are actually beginning their career exploration process during sophomore year or earlier. So how can we engage them more effectively? So real quickly, for those of you who haven't heard of micro internships before, again, I'll keep this brief for those of you who have, micro internships are short-term paid professional projects completed by college students on behalf of busy professionals. They don't replace summer internships, they don't replace full-time roles, but rather think about them like going on a date where the summer internship or apprenticeship is like getting engaged. The full-time role is like getting married. These short-term projects let companies engage college students in the way they wanna be engaged through these bite-sized experiences, but also capture insights about the students to learn about them beyond what they could find from just a resume or an interview. The other thing that's important about micro internships is they provide value to busy professionals at your organizations because students are able to help on real bite-sized projects like content creation. We need a student to research and write an article on a given topic, perfect micro internship, or you're going to a conference next week, you need help crunching the list. Or for those of you in talent acquisition, we need someone to review job descriptions and help us understand how it compares to the job descriptions in similar companies or companies not in our space. Those are all perfect examples of micro internships. Micro internships tend to be between 10 and 40 hours of work by the student. They take place year round. They are 100% on demand. So you could post a micro internship today, have a student working on it literally tomorrow. And by the way, it's not you necessarily posting a micro internship. It's the person in the marketing team who needs help with a marketing related project. It's the person on the business development team that helps need, uh, that needs help on researching prospects. The person in finance that needs someone to create a KPI dashboard or do data analysis. Every professional has these bite-sized projects, these we shoulds and I shouldn'ts. Micro internships provide a valuable resource for those busy professionals while also supporting the campus recruiting initiatives of companies. No onboarding is required. They're not your employer contractor. They're all under NDA. Should, the, uh, should you work with a micro intern, you decided someone who you want to hire for a full-time role or a summer internship or anything else, no temp to perm or conversion fee, as one of my colleagues likes to say, we'll send you flowers, not a bill. Our mission is to create these equitable pathways from college to career. And the numbers speak for themselves. Engaging students how they want. 98% of students exceed expectations. They're doing a great job on these projects. And beyond that, when it comes to hiring outcomes, what we found is it works. Over 80% of students who complete micro internships come from populations underrepresented in the workforce, which is pretty powerful, especially when you look at the data about summer internships overall. From a cost perspective, companies using micro internships wind up saving 40 to 80% per hire. That's massive, 40 to 80%. And by the way, that ignores the value of the work the students are doing on behalf of the busy professionals at your organization. It also ignores the improvement in how you're allocating your time, less time flipping through resume books, planning career fairs, trying to herd the proverbial cats uh, around scheduling events and whatnot. So not only are you saving money, you're saving time and making your life easier and letting you focus on those things that are really core to your job. And then even better, when it turns into full-time hires, less than 2% leave their job 
within the first year, less than 2%, in contrast to 55% of all recent college grads who leave within the first year. The reason this model works is everyone benefits. So from a recruiting perspective, yes, you are lowering your cost, you're reaching a broader number of students, you're improving diversity, improving retention, making your life easier. But for the individual hiring manager, they see value because they can get on-demand support for those bite-sized projects they have on their plate anyway. Those, again, we shoulds and I shouldn't, they don't have time to do. They also appreciate the opportunity to give back. They, they love working with the college students on the project. So even though the college students are helping them get work off their plate, hiring managers appreciate the opportunity to, again, support students from their alma mater or reach students from different backgrounds. And they, again, they just love it. And the students also see value. Not only is it the pay, which is nice and ensures every student has equitable access, but they value the opportunity to learn about companies and build their resume and build their professional networks back to all of those core things that students are looking for in their campus recruiting. It gives them insights beyond what they could Google. And just to show you a very real example, this was a small program we were doing in Connecticut and Florida. And in the first few months of this program, there were over 200 companies that were working with micro interns, working with over 263 micro interns and still many more that come through this program. But I was pretty blown away by the numbers on the right. What other campus recruiting program would you have you seen that has 100% satisfaction, 100% of the organizations would recommend it, and 100% of the students? I mean, that is pretty powerful. And I think it's not really surprising though. I mean, the reason it works is back on the employer side, it's driving value for the busy professional that wants to offer the projects, but it's also driving value for the campus recruiting teams looking to build their pipeline, looking to reach students from schools they're not recruiting at, looking to deepen their engagement. And students are driving value as well. Again, they're reporting a massive improvement in their not only ability to get jobs, but even their skill development according to the NACE core competencies. So Parker Dewey is a platform that lets companies use this micro internship concept at scale, this concept of experiential recruiting. Through the platform, and we'll discuss how to use it in a moment, it helps companies reach students across 5,000 plus colleges, universities, boot camps, workforce programs, and the like across the country. Essentially unlimited reach without having to sort of go school by school by school, because we know we'd love to have deep relationships with every school, but the reality is only so many can you visit with career fairs and info sessions and the like? This lets you reach those students at those schools you may not be able to visit, but also reach the students at schools that you may be visiting, but aren't thinking about your company or aren't engaging because of their time commitments or preconceived notions of their, their major. So this helps organizations expand reach. It helps them deepen relationships. Again, deepen relationships at specific colleges. So for instance, I may recruit at Indiana University, my alma mater, but I'm only recruiting Kelly students. Well, this helps me look at the amazing students graduating from the communications program or psychology or liberal arts programs. They have those core skills. This helps me reach those students, but it also helps me reach the student who may be at Kelly interested in accounting, but I'm not a big four firm. How can I help them realize the opportunities in accounting available at my organization, even though they might not be considering us? or the student that's from Omaha who wants to return home, but isn't thinking about opportunities there, thinks they just have to go to New York or Chicago to go do work in that space. Helps organizations assess skills. You're seeing them in action. Instead of relying on how well someone interviews or their resume, you're able to actually see the skills through the actual work. And then ultimately, again, lowering the cost. And as I said, Parker Dewey is a platform that makes it easy. We give companies a way to not just offer the individual projects, but we build internal portals. That way managers in various departments can offer those projects. It's actually something where you now can have your managers working for you. The hiring managers are making your life easier because you're giving them a perk. You're able to go to that person in sales and say, do you need help on a project? Or I know you're looking to hire for a full-time role in marketing. Here's a resource you can use to get support from a college student. And if you really like that college student, 
uh, the work on the project, let us know and we'll bring them in for a summer internship or full-time role. We're providing all of those supports with internal portals, giving you the data that you can upload into your applicant tracking system, reporting on demographics, feedback, et cetera. Again, really the resources to provide that full cycle end-to-end -end campus recruiting, letting you access, engage, assess, and ultimately hire. And we're seeing companies use this across a variety of reasons, whether it's tied to DEI, whether it's tied to early access, organizations looking to audition, building geography, building their brand on campus. We design these programs specifically to align to the needs of specific companies. So for instance, one of the companies we work with is a global water technology company. Fortunately, a lot of college students hadn't heard of the brand, even though it is a Fortune 500 company. They are actively hiring college students for students interested in the environment, whether they want to do finance or marketing or sales or HR, if they're passionate about the environment, this is an amazing organization. But they were trying to build that brand. How can we build our brand if we're not able to invest the amount of capital in visiting every career fair and going to every info session like the Accentures or the Ernst & Youngs or the other massive companies? Well, they're using micro internships. They're offering non-technical projects to engage students beyond just the more technical roles. They're using remote projects to engage students who may be from their headquarters down in DC or any of their other office locations. They're using these projects to reach those students, whether they go to school in the DC area or elsewhere and want to return home. And they're using projects like developing dashboards, researching market trends, identifying ERG best practices. In all of these cases, these are projects that individual hiring managers need done. So back to the overarching theme here, micro internships work because that hiring manager in the marketing department needed help researching the marketing trends. They were able to get help from college students. It made their life easier. And meanwhile, the folks on the campus recruiting team were able to actually um, reach more students who may not have been considering roles at this company. And you can see some quotes. And Michelle, thanks for sharing in the chat. We actually have some updated numbers the numbers are actually now north of 2,900 students across 700 uh, schools as they continue to expand it. The next example is DEI. This is a global aerospace company that is using micro internships to reach students from populations underrepresented in the workforce. And this company's actually talked about it very, very uh, publicly. It was Northrop Grumman, where they were highlighting how they are using this to support their DEI initiatives. And in fact, if you go to their LinkedIn page, there's several examples of students who have actually been hired for full-time roles at, at Northrop who may not have been considering that company or who would have otherwise been filtered out by the traditional recruiting process. Not intentionally, but the reality is so many companies still rely on where someone went to school or who applied or major, these other things that don't predict. And in this case, they were offering projects that were very technical, analyzing acoustic data, evaluating sensing equipment. Again, this is Northrop. This is a company that works with top secret information with some of the largest, most sensitive government organizations. They still had projects that didn't require access to any of that confidential or sensitive info that were using public data. Now, granted, the students are still under NDA, but Northrop, and, and we suggest companies be smart about it. Again, you're not giving access to that type of PII or highly sensitive info. And these were the types of projects Northrop was offering. And if you look at some of the numbers, they're pretty incredible. The candidates working on this project, 61% identified as BIPOC and 56% female. Over 40 hiring managers engaged because hiring managers viewed this as a perk. And they actually brought in their employee resource groups on this. The next example is a global medical equipment company. And again, we'll share all these slides afterwards if folks have, um, if folks have questions, but this was a global manufac um, medical manufacturing company. And one of the most exciting case studies, and Allison Keefe talked about it during a webinar recently, is they've used this to actually fill business development roles for college students who are studying engineering, but didn't realize they could do business development. They didn't want to be in the lab. They, they have, from their time in college, but they still had this technical background. Smith Nephew had 
many students, again, one of the examples they shared was 23 students doing a business development role, micro internship, I should say, 23 students, and they were ultimately looking to hire 10. 23 students did the project of the 20 to, uh, 23, 18 they offered the interviews to. 17 actually decided to interview one raised, raised his hand and said, eh, yeah, not the right role for me, that's okay. That's okay for that student to figure it out before it turns into the full-time role. Of those 17 who interviewed, 14 turned into, or sorry, 14 uh, got offers, 13 turned into full-time hires. A year later, 100% of them are still there, including one student who was, uh, or one, I should say, recent hire who was awarded an Employee of the Year Award. Again, this is pretty powerful. A couple other quick examples. Again, at early access, how do you engage and, and nurture students? Again, this was a software company looking to build relationships with freshmen and sophomores. They found that going to info sessions and hosting career fair boots just wasn't working. It was driving the same old, same old students. They were using micro internships to do just that and expanded their reach. And they expanded it beyond just the focus schools, but also to start to build relationships with the HBCUs and HSIs and the professors. It was pretty incredible. And then the last example is one tied to geography. This was a global fintech company that isn't really that well known by students um, beyond its, its core location, but is probably one of the most exciting fintech companies out there or financial services companies out there. This company was again, using micro internships to find students for the 23 locations, students who may not have wanted to go to New York or Boston or San Francisco upon graduation. Here was a great way for them to do it. And here was also a great way for them to see the skills in action beyond just the finance student graduating from Penn with a 3-9. They saw it in action and it led to actually over 95% conversion of offer the hire. And one of the things that was most exciting is it took place, they launched this program in under a week. That's pretty incredible. And the reason this all works is it's valued by students. You're giving students what they actually want. Think about all of the time and effort you spend trying to convince students to attend your career fair booth or visit your info session or join the virtual event, hoping the emails are getting through, hoping the text messages are making it through the noise. Micro internships, you don't need to do any of it. In fact, we do zero outreach to the students. 100% of the students on our platform are here because they want to be here. They're not being forced by their schools. Now, we love when universities let students know it's out there but they're doing it on their own organically because again, you're giving them what they want. They're learning about the employers, they're building their skills, they're building relationships, and they're doing so in a fair, equitable way. And that's why it works. And in fact, we're seeing more and more schools highlighting this to employer partners. When employers are saying, I wanna build my brand on your campus, here's a great way to do it. Or I need to get to know students who are freshmen or sophomores, or I don't have the resources to support an internship or an apprenticeship, but I still need some help. Or we already have our plan in place. Well, here's a way that schools can look, I'm sorry, that employers can look beyond the focus schools. So one of the questions that always comes up is, what's the cost? Well, to run programs like this, it's incredibly cost effective. And we've showed a few examples. Again, these are four different companies that have done micro internship programs. And you'll notice they range. Company A was only looking to hire 10 full-time people and summer interns. That was their goal. They offered 25 micro internships. Of those 25, it led to 12 full-time hires. So they actually exceeded their goals. Their total cost, including again, all of the program management and the money that went into the pockets of the students was $13,000. That was just over a thousand dollar cost per hire, which is a pretty significant cost savings relative to the NACE average of north of six thousand dollars. And by the way, that ignores the value of the work. That ignores the metrics around diversity. That ignores the retention, et cetera, et cetera. Company C was bigger. They were looking to ultimately hire hundred students for internships and full time roles. They offered two hundred micro internships, and they had a hard cap at a hundred. They made 130 offers, ultimately convert, and they, they made the offers on a rolling basis. When they hit 100, they stopped. They had a 77% conversion rate. And again, from their perspective, this was great. It was better than the conversion rate of any other program they were running. 
And more importantly, when the students were accepting, they were doing so eyes wide open. So some of the 30 may, they made offers to, the students realized it wasn't the right fit. That was great. Again, from the company's perspective, better the student figure it out up front. And in this case, the total cost of the program for them was $90,000 under 900, I'm sorry, $900 cost per hire. And that included, I think it was a $25,000 program management and the balance of it went to pay the students. So we're happy to work with you on these programs. But again, it's important to remember that 90% of each of the micro internships goes into the students' pockets. So in the case of Company C, these students made something like um, $65,000. Um, that's pretty powerful. And that was money that went into the students' pockets. Students, um, students who were doing real work, students who were adding value to the company, students who may not have been able to participate in some of the other recruiting events, be it on-site career fairs because they had part-time jobs or job simulations because they couldn't take 20 hours out of their schedule to go do unpaid work, et cetera, et cetera. So what now? Here's five easy ways to introduce it. First, let busy employees know this is a resource for them. They'll value it. It's a great way for them to get help on those we should and I shouldn't projects. Teams that are hiring, teams that have open full-time roles, this becomes a great feeder. Freelance users, you probably have individuals within your organization that are already working on, um, working with freelancers on 10, 20, 30 hour projects. Let them know that they can do it with domestic college students. What a great way to get help on projects. And by the way, the students tend to exceed expectations. In fact, over 98% of the micro interns exceed the expectations of the hiring managers. Plus you're able to leverage this to help support your campus recruiting initiatives. ERGs, that has been so incredibly powerful. Members of ERGs love micro internships because they're able to not only get help on those small projects, but also build relationships from student, with students from backgrounds similar to their own and do it authentically. And for students, they can start to visualize themselves at that company because they're building those authentic relationships with members of similar communities. And then university alumni and fans. Let's do, let employees know who want to give back to their alma mater, that are big fans of their school. Here's a great way to give back to your school, but also creating these equitable pathways and supporting your business needs. And I guess the last thing is let us know if you have questions. We have an entire team here that's obviously passionate about this, that, has, uh, that believes in micro internships as the most effective way to create these equitable pathways and do so in a way that supports the employer needs. So we love working with the companies on designing specific programs that fit within what they're already doing and amplify the outcomes of it. With that, I think my colleagues were busy in the chat answering questions. Uh, not sure if there are any other questions folks have. Uh, I saw a question about timing. The typical micro internship requires between 10 and 40 hours of work by the student, tends to be due a few days to a few weeks out, and they are 100% on demand. So I am going to a conference. I need someone to write an article. In fact, we just got back from NACE. We had college students helping us summarize some of the data, writing articles, creating content based upon that. We use college students to help create presentations. And again, in all these cases, these are projects that would otherwise take me 10, 20, 30 hours to get done. And I need a few days, or I need in a few days to a few weeks. You get to set the date, you get to define the project. We have a whole bunch of templates to make it easy. And then everything is project-based, meaning that whether it takes the student eight hours to complete or they're 12 hours, you're still paying the same amount, the student is still being paid the same amount. It ensures that it's fair and equitable and removes another point of friction. We got a great question. Can students do more than one micro internship for a company? 100% yes. In fact, we see that a lot. We'll see a company work with the same student on several projects tied to a specific department. We've also seen cases where students are building upon prior projects. So for instance, a company we worked with needed help with new product uh, design. So they actually had three students working in parallel on doing competitive analysis of the space. All three did a great job, but there were two that really stood out. They then offered the opportunity for two of those students to do a second micro internship where they were creating content around their work. And then had one of the students do a third project around 
uh, doing market research with prospective customers. So yeah, we'll see it build upon it, but we also see micro internships doing more of the cross training, both to give students exposure to different departments at companies. So maybe I'll do a project for marketing tied to market research and then sales tied to business development and finance tied to creating a dashboard or even to assess different skills. Let's have a student do a micro internship writing a piece of content and we'll use it to assess writing communication skills. And then another project doing work in Excel to assess more technical skills using discounted cash flow analyses. So yes, we love seeing that happen. We got a question about international students. Yes, for international students, we strongly, strongly, strongly suggest you talk to the international student office at your school. We're happy to work with the schools. Typically, micro internships fall under OPT, pre-completion OPT. They're sure enough it doesn't burn too much of that time, if you will. But please, please, please talk to the school. And we are happy to talk with that school as well to do whatever help we can in answering those questions. We don't want students uh, to get in trouble. We got a question, is 10 hours enough? Uh, thank you, Michelle, for sharing, for sharing that. We actually did a great survey where students talked about how much these even 10 hour micro internships have helped them build their NACE skills. Again, things like communication, pro uh, problem solving, et cetera. And even in cases where they weren't building the skills, they were getting more comfort in them. They were having more confidence, which we know is so key especially for students who come from, un, from populations underrepresented in the workforce. Again, that imposter syndrome, et cetera. So we're just, we're so proud of it. Uh, question about what students can view, short video on what a micro internship, et cetera is. Yes, happy to share that. Um, we will set, I, I don't have the link in front of me, uh, but happy to make sure one of my colleagues shares it um, afterwards, unless they beat me to the punch in uh in getting it in the chat is there a, a parker dewey project manager for each micro internship the beauty of the model is most micro internships actually don't need a parker dewey project manager and we don't want to get in the way of it so for instance i did a project myself a couple of weeks ago i was giving a keynote and i was giving it on the monday morning and the wednesday before i realized my powerpoint presentation looked like a fourth grader and our marketing team was busy uh, but I needed to get it done. I posted a micro internship on that Wednesday. Thursday morning, I picked a student. Thursday afternoon, we had a call. She did a, she, a quick Zoom call where I said, this is what I'm looking for. Here's the draft. She asked me a couple of questions. Friday, I got a draft of it. I sent her some feedback over email, told her a couple of things I needed tweaked. Saturday afternoon, I got a final version. That was it. And again, I used it as an authentic customer. I didn't go in through the back. I didn't do it. Like, it was easy. It made my life simple because we're giving the students the resources they need to have a great experience. That said, we have an entire client success team here that keeps track of things. And we're here to happy, and we're happy to help if you have questions posting the projects. For those of you in the campus recruiting teams, when you're sharing it with the various departments, we're happy to do webinars to introduce it. We're happy to have the, again, the client success team answer questions, help post, whatever they need. If there's any hiccups along the way, we're there. Again, fortunately, we found over 98% of the time, the micro interns actually exceed the expectations and they do so without that handholding from Parker Dewey. They don't need it. It's pretty powerful to watch it in action. But again, you will never be in a situation where you have to go it alone. We always have our client success team monitoring these things, checking in, keeping track. Um, but we found it's pretty, pretty easy. And again, it goes back to the fact that everyone has we should and I shouldn't projects. Everyone on this call has them. Things that are on your to-do list you don't have time to get done. Things you're dreading doing because they just ain't the best use of your time. And while crunching a conference list or doing a first draft of an article might not be the best use of time for you, there are literally millions of college students who are excited. They're hungry for those experiences, the opportunity to learn about your industry, the opportunity to build a relationship, demonstrate skills, explore career paths. It's absolutely unbelievable. We got a question about who the students on Parker Dewey are, their qualifications and skills. Again, one of the things I'm most proud of is Parker Dewey is truly a democratic platform. 
We are open to all career launchers, whether they're in a boot camp, community college, four-year institution, MBA program, PhD, you name it. We welcome all. They come from every background, every institution, every type of experience. Some of them have more technical skills. So we had a project posted a few months ago where the company was looking for a student who could code in Python, was an expert in Power BI, and also spoke fluent Spanish. Company posted that project 24 hours later. He had 14 applicants. In his words, 13 of them were amazing. He picked the student, they did the project. It can be highly technical projects like that. They can be projects that are more just research. We need someone to research and draft an article. Guess what? The liberal arts student, the student studying history, philosophy, has incredible skills researching, incredible skills crafting an argument, conveying facts. That's the beauty of micro internships. And back to my earlier comment, while we are not a diversity platform per se, we're open to all, over 80% of the students who work on micro internships do come from platform, I'm sorry, from populations that are underrepresented in the workforce. So we are seeing it truly create these equitable pathways. And for companies, you can really focus on what you're looking for. You wanna focus on students that have ties to Cleveland, Ohio, no problem. What a great way to engage students who go to Case Western, but also the student from Cleveland who goes to the Ohio State University or UCLA or University of Texas Commerce or Florida A&M or University of North Carolina. It's a great way to reach that student or you're really interested in engaging freshmen and sophomores, no problem. Or what about you're really interested in engaging students who have skills tied to IBM technology? Not only is it a great way to reach the college students, but through partnerships we have with organizations like IBM, it's a great way to reach students who are going through the skills build program, getting trained up in those IBM technologies. We got a question about active duty military, 100% yes. Again, when I use the term college, I try not to, but we use it in a very big tent sort of way. We welcome all career launchers, irrespective of, again, age, or the type of post-secondary program they're going through, whether it's a boot camp, whether it's traditional four-year, whether it's two-year, whether it's another workforce program. Now, to be clear, for someone with 25 years of professional experience in marketing analytics, this is not the place to go for a side hustle. This is not the place to go if you want to go be an independent consultant in marketing analytics. Yep, there's other platforms that are really, really good for that. And that individual with 25 years of experience in that space already has the artifacts and the skills and the, um, uh, the opportunities to demonstrate those skills through prior work experiences. In the case of Parker Dewey, the individuals going through those boot camps and other training, these micro internships provide them the way to demonstrate their skills. They're excited to work on these projects as a way to do so. I think I answered all of the questions. Michelle, Kristen, anything I meant. Allison Keefe, it's great to see you here. I hope you didn't mind me giving you the shout out earlier about the amazing work you've been doing with, uh, with Smith Nephew. So thank you for that. Um, any other questions in here? I think I hit them all. All that said, again, I know we'll share the link uh, to the deck. We'll share a link to the presentation uh, and everything else. Um, so yes, we'll share the presentation, we'll share the deck. There is no catch. Everything is designed to make it easy and remove points of friction. For busy professionals there, or, or for HR professionals, no 1099, no W-2, no temp to perm, they're under NDA, there is no catch. Again, we want this to be easy. We want this to be able to um, support all learners, all organizations. And then for those of you that stuck until the very end, um, we have an amazing program we're doing in partnership with the Frederick DeLuca Foundation. Uh, the Frederick DeLuca Foundation in its effort to support college to career transitions is actually funding the first five micro internships for organizations. They are covering the cost. There's a couple of limitations. First, it's up to five per organization. Second, these are projects designed to require about 15 hours of work. So students are paid $300. It's not a reimbursement. It's not anything you need to apply for. It all happens automatically. And third, the students have to go to school in Florida, 
or Connecticut. And that's because it's where the Frederick DeLuca Foundation is based. So for anyone on this call that sort of wants to try it out, this is an incredible opportunity with 100% of the cost covered. Now to be very transparent, the goal of the foundation is that the companies, the employers on the call will love this so much that they'll wanna integrate micro internships into their campus recruiting because the foundation sees the impact it has on equity and access and supporting the learners and organizations. So that is the hope, but there's not the expectation. There's not the need or requirement. So again, it's a great opportunity to get some help on the small project you have on your own plate, but also a great way to see it in action. And again, it's up to five per organization that are being covered by this grant. You can certainly do more and you can certainly do them with students from other schools in different scale. In those cases, the organization, y'all are the employer is paying for them directly. And again, we invoice you, et cetera. Um, but it's up to five that are covered through this grant with those limitations. And again, there is zero catch. There is no lift. You can post a project right now and have an incredible college student from Connecticut or Florida doing the project even before today is through. If there's no other questions, thank you everyone so much for your time. Thanks for joining us. We'll make the recording and slides available. And again, please, 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 if you have questions, let us know. We obviously love this. We're passionate about supporting the micro internships. We're passionate about supporting the students and employers and creating opportunities that truly are a win for everyone. And again, love working with companies on building out these programs, providing them with the data, providing them with the access to students across the country, creating these equitable pathways. And we love collaborating with the employers on something that truly creates this kind of win-win. With that, this concludes the webinar. Thank you so much to everyone for joining. Have a wonderful rest of your week.